Hi, and welcome to today's session all about transcripts. We are going to walk you through the process of creating a transcript for your student and discuss the types of things that go on there, how to do it. We're going to break it down and make it as simple, as easy for you as possible. I know this is sometimes very intimidating to think about creating your own transcript. So we're going to hopefully put those fears to rest. I'm being joined today by Jana and Lisa. I am Sunny. I'm Sunlight's community manager, and I have homeschooled two kids entirely with Sunlight. My oldest is entering high school now, so we're just starting a transcript. But Jana, why don't you tell us about your kids and how many transcripts you've created with them? Hi, I'm Jana Lawrence. I have four kids, two boys, two girls, all have graduated using Sunlight, and I have created transcripts for all of them and applied to state colleges and accepted. Yeah, so that's the other thing. They work, don't they? <laughs> they do. They do. And we also have Lisa with us. Lisa, tell us about your students and the transcripts you've created for them. So I'm Lisa. And my girls, I have two girls that I homeschooled all with sunlight from kindergarten through graduation. So um, they both also have graduated and gone on to living their adult lives. Um, and so I've created two transcripts. Both were successful. Both girls were accepted to college, the college of their choice. And um, so that's that's the knowledge with which I speak. <laughs> Perfect. Well, so let's talk about for maybe a parent whose student is entering high school and they're trying to figure out what classes or credits the student needs to take. How do you go about even figuring that out, what your students should be taking in high school. So the first thing I tell moms when they come and they talk to me is go and look up what your state they're generally require. So you know the baseline of what's going to be expected for your kids. The other thing is I like to tell parents think you're going to do four subjects, four years is be the most perfect academic plan and then add in some languages and electives on site on the side. Yeah, that's um, I checked both my local board of education to see what um, the people that my children would be competing for a seat at a state college would need. Uh, my state does not require that I follow that, but I tried to make my transcript similar. Also, I checked with the colleges that they were interested in to see what their requirements were. Um, so. I think having that kind of uh, background knowledge helps you as you start to build your course plan for the four years of high school. Right, yeah, and I know we have like the academic subjects like history, language, arts, science, math, like those are things that pretty much every child will need to take. But what about the, when it comes to maybe number of credits or electives, how are you determining that? Because that's a little more... I don't know, fluid up in the air catered to your student, but not as specific as maybe like, oh, everybody needs this many math credits. So how do you determine that piece of it? So well, again, oh, sorry, Johnny, you go. No, I, you go ahead and start. I'll formulate what I'm saying. The first thing that I thought for those was again from my local board of education. What and and in my state, there are several different types of diplomas. There's like an academic college prep diploma, there's a basic diploma, and then there's a completion diploma. So I looked at the college prep because that's really what we were doing was we were preparing our children to go to college, whether they chose to go to college or not was not that part of that equation. We, we wanted them to have the opportunity. So um, when I looked at that, that was kind of where we were. But my general formula was like Jonna said, the four basic subjects for four years plus two electives, which gave them six times four, 24 credits, which is about what kids were graduating from, from the public school or traditional school. Right. So the only thing I would add is that I think our college prep needed 26 credits instead of the high school credit, the high school diploma is 24. And that was your extra two uh, two years of language arts, or not foreign language, excuse me. Foreign language. Foreign <laughs> language. Yeah, so uh, of course, like you guys said, that information is out there. Sunlight actually has a kind of a template that you can use as well. Um, so we'll make sure to drop that link so people watching can, can find that as well. But how do you actually go about now assigning the grades and determining the GPA? Once you have 
the classes, you know, I, there's all the things about weighted GPAs, unweighted GPAs, AP honors classes, regular classes. How do you figure that out and then assign the grades for each of those classes? So that too, I was able to find a grade scale online and I used it as an example. Our, I live in Alabama and we have a cover school. Our cover school already provided a, a grade scale that they use for our transcripts and what is an honors and what is for an AP. And so it's already figured out. All I have to do is submit the class and say, this was an honors class or this was an AP and then the GPA was figured for me. Uh, most sunlight history in high school can be considered as honors if they do all the work. And so I was able to just tell them it was honors. AP usually has a requirement that it's already set. And so you want to use a curriculum that is already declared an AP curriculum to declare it AP. Right. That was, um, I did give my girls honors credit for both um, English and history because we did sunlight for both the, the history and Bible and the literature. And we did every assignment, we did every mapping assignment, we did every timeline assignment. So I gave them honors credit, um, which on our grading scale, when I researched said an A was a 4.5, that was the weight. And then there are a few sunlight classes that already say they're AP. Um, economics was one. There's two schedules to follow when you get to economics. One was the traditional, one's the AP. We did the AP. We did not take the AP test, but we did do that. And then um, I believe that Apologia Advanced Biology states that it's an AP class. So those were the only two AP classes my kids had. But that an A in that class counts as a five in your weight. Um, but my transcript showed both GPAs, a weighted GPA and a non-weighted GPA. A lot of colleges will ask for the non-weighted as well as the weighted. Right. Yeah, so I guess how do you go about figuring out how to maybe format that transcript in a way that it looks the same or equivalent to what kids coming out of school would do. What you both are saying, and if people aren't quite catching that, is that you are going to determine the parameters for, you know, what that student's required to do to achieve a certain grade, um, and you get to pick those classes and how you title them on the transcript. But how do you make that transcript, you know, if you're new to this, how, how do you make it look like it's coming from a school or make sure that your kids have the same advantage that a child coming out of school would? So one Sunlight has on our website um, a link for transcripts and it has some sample transcripts and it gives you two different ones. Um, the basic one that I like to use is like quads. So it gives me the four years of high school and I list their classes in each corner. So it's like a big square, a grid. And I can put the class, the, the grades, the letter grade, the GPA is all in it. Um, another one that I know that a lot of state colleges, they like it too. I've talked to a lot of admissions officers in different colleges that you list by the subject. And they're like, we don't care if it's by the grade or by the subject, just show us what they did. So I could put in all the English, I could put in all the Bible, I could put and just list it that way. So if you have a child that let's say really did all their math and they did two maths in one year, you don't have to worry about fudging it saying, well, that was his 10th grade and his ninth grade. You just list the math and you're being totally honest and it's just in a good format for them. Yeah, I did my oldest daughters by subject because she had done math pretty early. Um, and I personally believe that math and foreign language are the only two things that you can do early. I don't think even if you do American history early, I don't think that you should show that on your transcript. That's my personal opinion. Um, but math algebra is algebra. So she had taken that beforehand. So it did make her transcript easier to organize it by subject than by year. There was a lot less explaining to do. She did algebra in sixth grade. So that was going to be a lot to put on her transcript. Um, so we just did it in chunks. My youngest daughter, who was on a much more traditional path, 
we did it by year. This is her freshman year. This is her sophomore year. Um, neither one did I have an issue with, and I actually made them both just in Excel. I guess I never really thought, oh, I want their transcript to look or appear like their peers. I just wanted it to have comparable classes. So I never thought about how it was going to look. I guess I should have, but I didn't. <laughs> So, but I think that's encouraging that, yeah, your girls were both able to go to the school of their choice, despite the fact that, yeah, you weren't trying to make it look any yeah certain way, um, and that you both brought up the year versus subject, because I've seen a lot of people asking online and in various places, like, oh, if my eighth grader is already taking algebra or whatever, you know, how do I apply that to high school if I'm doing it by the four years, but by doing it by subject, like you ladies said, then that way they're able to include all of those classes without specifying. What do you do when, like, say your student is applying to college during their junior, senior year and their classes aren't done yet? How do you handle that when they're applying for things? You really just simply, you would mark on the classes, put a pending, mark that it's pending somehow, either at the top with the GPA or at each class. And the colleges know they're still in class. They are fully aware. They will ask for that final transcript when the graduation hits. They know your right. kids. I like you put a graduation date, expected graduation date on your transcript too. So obviously if they're graduating May 6, 2023, you cannot submit a final grade in January of 2023 because they're not done. So just mark that it's pending. Um, another yeah, thing real I quick on put it in uh, italics right any italics. classes that were not yet taken and I put proposed because when we're applying in junior year we thought that's what we we're going to take in senior year but what if something changed so I put italics and proposed yeah or change the font color and put it in italics so it's very obvious yeah, so what about um, like the diploma, the resume, other documents that you may need? Um, I've also seen questions about that. Like, do you put their activities on the transcript? Does it go on a separate resume? How do you get your diploma? Do you need a diploma? You know, all these extra paperwork pieces. How would you ladies answer that? I ordered a diploma off the internet. Um, there are, where I ordered cap and gown. Um, so I just ordered that and we signed it and I didn't turn in a diploma to apply for college. I don't think that's necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a section at the bottom of my transcript that had, um, I don't know what it said, outside activities or other interests or something. And that was where I just bulleted, you know, four year high school athlete volunteered at the Anna's Angels pet rescue, or, you know church volunteering. So that was where I put the activities that they had done, but I didn't go into a lot of um, detail, just really like a bullet point, four-year high school athlete, volunteer pet rescue. And no one asked me about that either. I think that is elaborated on on their um, college application if the college is looking for that kind of thing. So I also have a little spot on mine. It's called extracurricular activities is what I did. And so like if they did drama all four years, I might give them one drama or fine arts credit on the transcript, but the rest I would just list was in drama lead role, you know, one, two, three, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. And maybe if they work props or sound or whatever, and just that kind of information, very bulleted, like Lisa said, they really just want to see that your kids do more than just go to class. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so I think you guys bring up the, the fact that it's a lot easier, I think, than people think it is. And that, you know, if you're looking at what's required by your state or your cover school or the school they want to go to, it doesn't have to be that hard. Um, but I know there are, you know, like we have a cover school where I am, where they'll review your transcript for you to make sure everything's on there that you need. So you might check with your state homeschool organization too, to see if you're if you're worried about that or check with somebody who has graduated other kids and successfully created that transcript for them. Um, you both mentioned using it to get into college though. What about if your student you know is not college bound? How does that change the classes they take and do you still need to create a transcript for them? Um, I think you need to still create a transcript because that 
even like going into the military and stuff, they want to see that, that they finish school. I mean, and that is what you're going to do. But if you have a non-college bound student and you know, he's, you know, you have a son and he wants to be a plumber, I would still map out his four years and then maybe get him an internship or, you know, something that you could record in there, but you still need to create that. That's a finished, that's a goal that they have succeeded. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think whatever they go to do, someone's going to want to say, just like a resume, what have you done with your, what have you been doing up until now? And a transcript is helpful for that. Um, I don't think a physical diploma is necessary for really, I don't, I don't know that anyone ever asks for that, but I wanted to have one for my kids just so they would, and for me, like, I did a lot of work to get here too. <laughs> My youngest actually said, oh, I don't want a cap and gown. And I was like, oh, there will be yeah, a cap and gown. <laughs> there will also be a diploma because I have finished the race. Um, so I do think that's an important thing. I think it's hard for an 18 year old to see down the road and I wouldn't want to regret something like that. Um, but I do think a transcript, view it as a resume. And you asked about non-college bound kids. If, if you know that they're not doing that, then I would tailor their course load to help them in what they are doing. So mm -hmm. if, if they want to run a lawn care business, tailor that. Instead of algebra two or pre-calculus, let's learn some business accounting and let's learn some horticulture or agriculture or whatever that is. Um, I think that's the beauty of homeschooling is we don't have to fit into the box. And if that's what your child is interested in, pursue that for them. The other yeah, thing I, I do, oh, go ahead, Jenna. I was just going to add a lot of our job applications, just even whatever we'll ask, have you received your high school diploma? Right. And so creating that transcript in the finished product, you know, They've, they have graduated and where, where they've graduated. So that is something they can, they know they have that, so. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, most organizations probably aren't gonna ask for that, but if you have a, a young student who's starting a job and they need to prove that they graduated high school, it's gonna be super helpful to have that. Um, but I was gonna piggyback on something you said, Lisa, about when you're homeschooling, you have that unique opportunity and that time to really figure out what your kids want to do as opposed to, you know, just, oh, yep, you're good at this, you know, go major in that, or, oh, yep, you, you should go do this. Um, and so I love what you said about maybe moving them towards an internship or something so that they can try out that career or take the classes towards what they want to do because yeah I mean as we all know who you are at 18 is not who you are even 10 years after that and so giving them the most options possible while they're young and still in your homeschool I think is super helpful um so that's great advice there as well on top of just the transcript itself but do you ladies have any other advice maybe for those parents whether they have you know soon to be high schoolers or their kids are about to graduate anything else about you know transcripts college admissions high school what would you say first thing i would say i would really at 7th grade start looking at what my kids going to do to kind of give not map out every single year but just give a a guideline of what we're going to do so if anything they're taking in 8th grade like if they take algebra 1 we know that's going to be a high school credit so we'd move that in. The other thing is, is that if you are at your senior year and you're just now trying to figure out your transcript, there's a lot of life things that you can also add in there. So if you live on a farm and your child is in there working with the cows and the horses and they are part of working that farm and they are a vital member making it happen, I would look at what they need to do to make that an agricultural or a, you know, animal husbandry credit. There's a lot of creativity, but there's a lot of work that has to go into those. Yeah, I tell people that all the time for electives, especially um, look for things that your children are already doing and what can you add to it to make it class worthy? You know, my kids were already learning how to cook. So we said, okay, here's six weeks, meal plan, budget, shop 
all of those things. So that was the work that went into it. And that made it worthy, in my opinion, and it's my homeschool of being a home ec or a, I don't know what I, we called it home ec, but you could probably come up with some other fancy name for it. Same um, for my kids wanted to learn how to do um, calligraphy, hand lettering. So I bought a book and we watched videos and I logged my time and we made a portfolio. So we counted that as an art credit, but it was something we were already doing. You don't have to go out and buy 5,000 elective classes just to expose your kids and to have it on the transcript. Your kids are already doing things. Just add some academic reporting, performing, whatever your test could be that then it's a class. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for so much ladies for being here. I, like I mentioned at the beginning, my daughter is just getting to that high school point. So I've been keeping a list of all of her classes. That's where I am right now. So that, you know, we'll be able to figure that out that transcript. Um, in a couple of years, I'll be more where you ladies are and we'll have more to, to share there. But I appreciate you guys being here and explaining that um, to us. And that, yeah, again, it's your homeschool. You get to decide what you're going to require, what classes you're going to do, and what those guidelines are. So it's it's much simpler than it seems at first glance. Um, so thank you so much for being here. And as always, if you have any questions and you're watching, feel free to reach out to us. Either um, our advisors are available through our website or you can contact our mentors and our Sunlight Connections app. And we would love to help you out.